What is up everyone, my name is Guillaume and welcome to this new episode of Hit The Tone. I hope you're all doing fantastic today and welcome to this new episode of Hit The Tone on Thomas Guitars and Basses. If you're not familiar with it, I'll drop the whole playlist in the description box down below, but basically I'm just trying to give you all the tools you need to hit the tone and the playing on your favorite songs. If you have any recommendations for me, just drop them in the comment section down below and while you're there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on the future episodes. Thank you so very much in advance. But with that said, let's start with today's song, which is Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. I'm not gonna try to explain Smoke on the Water or how famous it is. It might just be the most famous guitar riff ever recorded, created and whatnot. Any guitar center at 10 in the morning will tell you that, you know, that's the first riff that most people start learning, start playing, and for good reasons. Recorded by the maestro Richie Blackmore on Deep Purple's Machine Head. As far as I'm aware, and you tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, uh, Richie Blackmore used a Fender Stratocaster, he was famous for using a Black Strat, into a Marshall Major split into two 4x12 cabs uh, using cream greenback, greenback speakers and boosted the front of it with a treble booster. It's a very classic setup, really iconic. The birth of like hard rock kind of guitar sounds, just a Strat into a major and that was it. So I'll be playing my Fender Strat in the bridge position. I'll be going through the J Rocket Audio Archer, uh, which is a clone clone. As you guys know, pretty conservative settings, but it's just gonna be helping me to tighten the amp that I'm using today, which is the Marshall Studio Mark II. It is basically the small version of the Plexi. The settings are a little bit unconventional, but you gotta keep in mind that this amp is vastly different from the major. It has a lot less headroom, uh, a lot less inherent low end, and that kind of, uh, you know, can sort of take your head off if you don't know how to dial those in. This is pretty extreme, I've got the mids all the way up, some bass dialed in, because that's a really growly kind of riff, the low end on it is pretty intense, so I did want to keep that in, and obviously it is completely gunned, which is a lot of fun, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna play for too long though. Let's play the guitar into the amp first, and then I'll add in the pedal so you can hear the difference. <laughs> with the pedal. So as I mentioned, the uh, Archer is doing a lot to boost the front end of the amp. It keeps everything sort of tight and it's a little bit gainier, of course as well because we maxed out the headroom on that one. Both levels are cranked up. I also forgot to mention that I'm gonna be using the Strymon Flint in the effects loop of the amp. So it sits after the gain stage and I'm using it on the 70s mode, really low in the mix, but to have some plate reverb into the sound. Now, I don't think there was any reverb on the original recording, but the miking situation was completely different at the time. There was a lot more room miking. So you do have that massive sort of guitar sound and the reverb does help for that a little bit. And with all the gear out of the way, let's jump onto the final part of that video, which as usual is the most important and is how to play the riff. And before I start with the playing, uh, I just want to remind you guys that there will be a bunch of useful links in the description box, uh, links to the tabs for the song, links to all the gear that I'm using today, including some more recommendations at different price points, if your gear doesn't cut it. Now this song is being played in E standard, and as I mentioned in the beginning, it's probably the first song that most electric guitar players learn, because it is so iconic, the 035 is, Ba yeah, it's basically a meme, but it's actually wrong. So it's not actually being played on the D and G strings of the guitar MT, but actually on the fifth fret of the A and D strings. So that's gonna be right here. The other important thing to keep in mind for that song is that you want to finger pick it because both strings are being attacked at the same time throughout the riff. 
and that really does help a lot with just the thickness of the chord because if you play with a pick even if it's very minimal there's going to be a little bit of a delay in between both strings naturally and so that's going to sound slightly different so you do want to play it with your fingers either these two or these two uh, whichever works best for you and we're going to start by having a look at the fretting side of it <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier, it's actually 5-3-5. Five, five. It's still super easy, super... I think it, it just needs to be the first one that you learn, or at least among the first riffs that you learn on the guitar. But it's really cool, there's a few tricks to it. I think it's still a really interesting riff and, and you know, the most famous riff of them all, probably. With that said, let's have a look at the picking side of it. <laughs> And again, I can't stress enough how important it is that you pick both strings at the same time because it really makes for the sound of these, you know, super simple two string, one fret chords. It helps you also kind of put in those stops in between. It's not really pull muting as you would do if you were to hold a pick, but it's really almost like slapping the strings to stop them in between the chords. And I think that really adds up to the sound of it and just makes it sound the way that it should sound. And so on that, I think that's it, guys. You have all the tools you need to hit the tone on Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. Now, I hope I haven't angered any Deep Purple fans out there. It's still, to this day, a really hard kind of sound to get because we you do have to gun a Marshall amp and, you know, play it right. But I think, you know, so many people start with that song. I just wanted to give you some more tools to sort of try and understand what was going on behind the strings. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope you had some fun learning or relearning that riff and maybe some useful information here and there. If so, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss out on the future episodes because they very well might be about your song. Just let me know which one you want me to cover in the comment section and I'll get to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, I wish you all a fantastic week and I'll see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit the Tone. Mm -hmm.